And now to creative problem solving and effective decision making and personal career planning made clear by the use of the tarot card of all things. Joining us is author and former WorldCom employee Mark McElroy. We were talking earlier about uh, uh, companies being in trouble and you were right in the middle of it and that's kind of what caused all this to happen. Is that right? You know, it really is. I, I owe a lot to Uncle Bernie, <laughs> whose, uh, whose shenanigans encouraged me to leave the corporate world and go out on my own. And while I was working on books uh, before that took place and had some work as a, a corporate consultant on my own, this really pushed me out the door and made me determined to be a full-time writer. You were, you were training people at Skytel and at WorldCom and brainstorming and working on ideas. And That's tell me correct. how this idea was born. And is it witchcraft? <laughs> That's a, a number, <laughs> right number up, of people are expecting us to sure, call an 800 sure. number here. Uh, well, right up front, let me stress that what we're doing has nothing to do with the traditional approach to fortune telling. We're all used to seeing Sister Doolally on TV saying, Honey, that man's cheating on you. <laughs> yeah. This is something completely this is different. Not that. Exactly. Instead, this is really an approach to visual brainstorming. Now, everyone's familiar with just brainstorming, mm -hmm. uh, the idea of mind mapping or making a list of everything that's on your own mind. And that will take you so far. The problem is the only resource you're working with is what's in your own head. Right. Visual brainstorming takes brainstorming to the next level. So when you're, you're talking about being in a session with people who that's are right. absolutely blocked. There's that's right. No exactly. place else to go. Right. So to get past that, what you do is you bring in a random image. And big companies have been doing this for years. You might put up a picture of an apple on a screen and ask the participants, how is our product like an apple? Well, it could be sweeter. Um, it might have a wrapper that needs to be removed before you use it. You might ask, why are our ads failing? And you look at the apple and you say, well, because really you need an apple a day to keep a doctor away. We're not getting an ad out every day to get people's attention on mm -hmm. us. So just by riffing on this visual image, right. people come up with a new way to approach their problem. But people are uncomfortable doing that, aren't they? It's, it takes a lot of courage they to They really are. Because, yeah. yeah, the corporate environment doesn't encourage rampant creativity. Uh, people are rewarded so often because they just mouth whatever their bosses have told them to say. Mm -hmm. So rather than, than take that approach, visual brainstorming opens people up to something that's more fun, more playful, therefore more creative, and potentially a lot more profitable. So where did this idea come from? Okay, the problem with working with random visual images, things you tear from magazines, for example, you don't always have magazines to tear your images from. Mm -hmm. And if you lose your library of magazine images that you've ripped out of, of the pages of Time or Newsweek, it's gonna cost you a lot of money to replace to them. To go back and get them again. Tarot cards have terrific advantages. First, they're portable. You're going to be able to slip a deck of tarot cards into your pocket or purse. No one will even know it's there. They're inexpensive. For less than 15 bucks, you can pick up a tarot deck. They're everywhere you go. Borders, books a million. Yeah. Uh, every kind of chain store, bookstore you visit is going to have a deck of tarot cards. Uh, how many in your collection? I have about 175 decks. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm an extremist. But but still, how do you get past the negatives? Because there are, there are people watching this evening who are saying, you know, cards themselves are just the devil's place. I'm not going to go there. Yeah. A lot of that is based on a misunderstanding of where the cards came from in the first place. Tarot cards are about as mundane, really, as you can get. They were created in the 1400s, playthings for royalty. And they featured images that would have been appealing to the Renaissance Italians at the time. It was 400 years later before a French hairdresser walked in on some ladies who were playing the game of tarot, still played today, by the way, in France. Mm -hmm. It's very popular there. And said, oh, behold, in these cards, I see the secret teachings of the ancient Egyptians. <laughs> Made quite a name for himself. And the whole yeah. craze of fortune telling with tarot cards so dates to that time. That's where it began. Well, we have uh, about a few minutes here. You need to show me how this works. First of all, these, t tell me the differences between these cards. These are just beautiful. Oh, thanks. This is a deck called the Medieval Enchantment deck. And um, of the thousands of decks on the market, each one usually has very similar structure to the others. Mm -hmm. But the, the images on the cards themselves may differ from deck to deck. Uh, this one has a sort of a medieval flavor. Uh, the deck you're holding is one called the Gilded Tarot. It's got more computer-generated art. It has a sort of a slicker, a more little, modern look. A little slicker, more contemporary. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then here, uh, these cards are from a deck called the Bright Ideas deck. It's a deck that I've created. It'll be out in March of 2005. And you have really taken it to the, the simplest level, right? That's exactly Conclusions, right. Conclusions, learning information, 
those kind of things. Here you don't have to worry about any of the things that folks normally associate with tarot. Um, there's no nudity because sometimes the images in tarot will feature artistic nudity. Mm -hmm. There are no spooky symbols. There's no focus on hocus pocus. All of these images come from contemporary life. People see them and they identify with them right away. Almost like Gilbert cartoons. Yeah, exactly. Well, 